In my opinion, Beatles are incredible and extremely important. I'm not sure how many of you at this stage would agree with me, but hopefully by the end of this talk, with the presentation of a few numbers, I hope I may have been able to convince at least some of you otherwise. So my first number is 400,000, a big number by anyone's standards. For me, it becomes hard to imagine quantities once the amount of zeros exceeds four or five. 400,000 is the number of beetle species that have been described since 1758, an average of four beetles per day. And it is estimated that there are yet still millions more to be discovered and described. But if that's not impressive enough for you, how about this? If a single species of every known living organism, and just to clarify, this is not only every single animal species, but every single plant species too, if all of these were to be laid out in one single, extremely long line, one in five would be a beetle. Now that's worth visualizing. So I couldn't find a slide to accurately represent this incredible fact. So I thought we could show it using you, the audience. So inside your bags, uh, there should be a card, as yeah, was mentioned earlier. And if you could all show up your cards, and if you have a beetle, would you please stand up so we can see? So as you can see, if you look around you, beetles definitely make up a massive proportion of every single living organism. Thank you. So for a bit of background information about beetles, the scientific word for the general study of insects is entomology. An insect is defined as a small arthropod animal that has six legs and either one or two pairs of wings. Under the term insects are the main orders, which are Lepidoptera, the butterflies and moths, Hemiptera, true bugs, which are in fact not the same as beetles, although many people think they are. Hymenoptera, bees, wasps, and ants. Diptera, the flies. And of course, most importantly, Coleoptera, the beetles. Interestingly enough, the etymology of Coleoptera is sheathed wing, which refers to their hard elytra or wing cases on the outside of the beetle. Fascination with insects has been documented over several hundred years, one of the earliest records being of Lady Eleanor Glanville in the 1600s. Lady Glanville was an aristocrat whose passion for studying entomology was very unusual and probably quite brave at the time, considering that she still could have been accused of witchcraft. Her will was even contested by her own children, who declared her insane due to her passion for collecting insects. It took some time for this to catch on and become the norm. It wasn't until the Victorian times when such behavior became a popular pastime. Beetles have been around, are the most successful animals on Earth and have been around for more than 230 million years. They have adapted to live in most parts of the world where they carry out their work as pollinators, decomposers, and recyclers of carrion wood and dung. The ancient Egyptians even worshipped the sacred scarab beetle or dung beetle as the personification of their sun god Ra, rolling the sun or even balls of dung across the sky each day. This is the sacred scarab beetle, Scarabus acker. Dung beetles carry out the incredibly important job of dung removal, which at the same time controls flies, suppresses parasites, enables, um, su uh, sorry, recycles nutrients, enhances plant growth and soil structure, enables secondary seed dispersal and pollination. So imagine what our planet would be like or even smell like without this essential service. There is a global estimate of 100 billion kilograms of dung being produced every 24 hours. So this makes a cleanup operation being valued at 380 million US dollars per year in the US alone. Dung beetles should also be appreciated for their extraordinary weightlifting ability, rolling around balls of dung that can weigh up to 50 times their own weight. But the prize for the world heavyweight champion goes to Onthophagus taurus, which was recorded rolling a ball of dung equivalent to 1,141 times its own body, body weight. That's equivalent to an average man pulling 80 tons or six double-decker buses. So more recent uses of beetles include that of predatory beetles being employed as biological control agents against agricultural and forestry pests. Beetles have even inspired scientists to develop new materials from lightweight iridescent car paint and reusable ad adhesive tape to monetary security systems. Personally, I think that's amazing. So many of you may be under the impression 
that beetles are mostly smallish, black or brown, and a bit boring, ladybirds aside, which is also a beetle, by the way. And perhaps this is due to your brief encounters while digging in the garden or looking for something in the cupboard under the stairs. There are only about 4,000 different species of beetle in the UK, um, the largest of which is Lucanus cervus, the stag beetle, as you can see in the photo. Going abroad, however, definitely introduces you to some more exotic, colorful, and certainly bizarre species, such as the harlequin beetle, um, Acrocinus longimanus, longimanus referring to its extremely long front legs, the giant jawed sawyer, Macrodontia cavicornis, Macrodontia referring to its extremely large mandibles or teeth. The rice hisper weevil, Dicladispa armigera, which has a very spiky exoskeleton to protect itself from predators. The trilobite beetle, which I think looks very impressive and almost like it's come out the prehistoric era. Um, the Rothschild's jewel beetle, Madacassia Rothschildi, a very shiny and jewel-like beetle. The giraffe neck weevil, Trachylophorus giraffe, one of my personal favorites due to his bizarre giraffe-like anatomy. The frog-legged leaf beetle, Sagrobuqueti, which does have very large frog-like legs. Supposedly, the females find this very attractive. Um, the Javan fiddle beetle, Mormoloche philodes, a perfect mimic of a seed pod, and another favorite of mine due to its resemblance to a violin. The golden scarab beetle, one of possibly one of the most shiny and metallic beetles. It, you, actually, if you can look closely in the photo, you can even see my reflection in its um, wing cases where I was taking the photo. And finally, the giant African longhorn, Petrognatha gigas which has a, is a very large beetle which has antennae that can often be twice the length of its own body. So beetles definitely vary in size, from the largest and very impressive Titanus giganteus, which is 170 millimeters in length, which is a little bit bigger than the size of my hand. This compares with the smallest beetle in the world. I don't know if you can actually see it. It's the arrow in the corner. The little black dot on the card is in fact a beetle and it measures 0.3 millimeters in length, and therefore too small for the naked eye to actually see. So I spent some time during my school holidays volunteering at the Natural History Museum in the Coleoptera Department in London. The extraordinary collection there houses 200,000 beetle species. 2,000 to 3,000 new species are added the to the collection each year. There are 22,000 drawers containing 10 million specimens, which were described by Max Barclay, the head of the collections, as like a population of a small country, and even he hasn't seen them all. There are 500 to 600 entomologists that visit these extremely important collections each year. The collection houses many valuable specimens, specimens from important collectors, including Charles Darwin and Alfred Russell Wallace, who worked simultaneously on the theory of evolution with a lot of help from the beetles they studied. Wallace spent eight years traveling in the Malay archipelago, where he recorded collecting a total of 125,660 specimens of natural history, of which 83,200 of these were beetles. That's well over half. So I hope I may have been able to convince you of the extraordinary diversity and extreme importance of these often underrated creatures. And so to conclude, when the British scientist J.B.S. Haldane was asked what could be concluded from the creator from observations of his work, Haldane replied, an inordinate fondness for beetles. This is a fondness I also share with a passion. Thank you.